Hi, I'm going to give you a quick tour how to uh, do a self-hosted installer for uh, the apps code or the byte builders uh, dashboard. So to start with, uh, you need to visit this URL, selfhost.bytebuilders. So once you click here, if you do not have an account, uh, it will take you to this login page. Uh, if you do not have an account, uh, you can sign up clicking this sign up button for an account. And then once you are logged in, please go back to this URL. So once you are at this page, you will be able to essentially generate the necessary Helm configurations or the values uh, for uh, doing a self-hosted installer. So just click on this uh, create new installer. So here I'm going to show you this self-hosted demo installation mode. So this will give you a 30 days free trial license to try out all the features of our UI. Uh, to try it, uh, we can uh, just need a, give it a demo uh, domain. So give it any domain you like, uh, because it, the actual domain will be uh, hosted under a subdomain that is uh, operated by apps code. So let's say we call it demo.com. And now uh, it asks for a public IP. So this public IP, uh, to get this public IP, you need a machine where you are going to run this uh, installation. Uh, for that, uh, we recommend that you get a Ubuntu machine. So here I'm going to use Linode, or I guess that's known as Akamai today. Uh, a, this uh, machine will need to have a public IP address that you can connect to. And we also need a 8 GB memory on this machine. So four CPU and 8 GB memory. And we are also using Ubuntu 22.04 for this installation. So it's just a single VM or server you can host on any cloud or on-prem as long as this has a public IP address uh, and has a uh, using Ubuntu 22.04, okay? Uh, so now you can uh, take this IP address and pass it here. Uh, and then for the uh, system domain, uh, when the installation is done, it will create an account uh, you know, uh, you can give it the name, username you want. So by default, it will take the user account that you use to sign up for by Builders, and then a password. So uh, you can give it any password you like, or otherwise it will generate a random password and tell you what the password was at the end. Okay, so then now hit the on. So now it has generated the necessary installation instructions. Uh, for uh, doing this installation. So what are we going to do is first uh, SSH into this machine. Now I'm logged into this machine for the first time. So I'm going to do app get update and upgrade.
So now uh, we're going to just follow this step, uh, set of instructions. So essentially it is going to create a Kubernetes cluster using K3S. Export the kube config. And then now we're going to just uh, check for the nodes, uh, essentially wait for the machine to boot up. Uh, so, so you should see this three uh, pod show up. Uh, it might take a few seconds for them to get started in as they pull those Docker images. Okay, so now those are running. So now we can go to the uh, installation step uh, to install Helm. Now we're going to use Flux CD to install the various Helm charts that is required for uh, this installer. So we need to install the Flux CD first. For that, we are just going to use their uh, official community Helm chart. So this is the command. Uh, once this is done, if we check for the pods, we should see that uh, these two Flux CD pods are running. Okay, so now we go into the uh, next step for uh, installing this Apps Code uh, Web Console installer, the ACE installer, we call it Apps Code Container Engine. Uh, to do that, you first need to download this uh, uh, values file that was generated for you. So click on this. Uh, this will download this archive. Now here you'll see the values.yaml, just uh, copy this file and take it to that machine. So we will just use nano to create this values.yaml file here. Once this file is there, we just need to run this uh, one home command. Okay, so now it's done. Uh, now we need to wait. So you can run this command Helm releases to see all these Helm charts are getting started. So so this is essentially using uh, Flux CD to install these various Helm charts that is needed to successfully uh, get the UI up and running. Uh, so once the steps are like done, you should see that ready column turns to true and also see the message becomes really uh, release reconciliation succeeded. Uh, so this process uh, now going to, uh, can typically take somewhere between five to 10 minutes because during this process it is also going to issue a kind of a real uh, TLS certificate using let's encrypt. So so that process can, uh, the this last step where the ACE uh, Helm chart is installed, uh, the Helm release is uh, you know, installed that process can take a few minutes to run, get running. Uh, you can ignore some of these intermediate errors because as Flux CD kind of goes through this process, sometimes you don't see some errors, but it should clean itself up on retry. So now we are essentially waiting for this last step. Uh, so this is going to uh, get a uh, actual uh, certificate. So to check that, we can also check for this command.
Uh, so once this turns true, we will know that the certificate has been issued. So this process can take a, a few minutes. Yeah, so it took almost uh, three minutes to get the certificate issued. So now uh, we can actually, uh, if we go back to the home releases, we should see that it's still ongoing. Uh, to see further progress, uh, we can go to this, uh, look at the pods uh, that are in the ACE namespace. So as you can see that these things are st slowly starting up. Uh, I think uh, primarily it is now waiting for this NAT spot to start, which uses or mounts this certificate that we that was just issued. So this will uh, now go into a uh, container in a running state, and then these two remaining containers should go into running. So we have to wait maybe another couple of minutes for everything to get to a, into good space shape.
Yeah, so again, uh, if some intermediate cache loops happen, uh, you just let it wait so it will restart and everything go into a working shape because it is mounting various secrets and stuff like that. So it can take a few minutes to get everything in a good shape. Okay, so now, uh, you know, all the kind of the containers are now running. Uh, one thing you can kind of check for is the, you know, the database pods are running, the platform API uh, that is running uh, in, and the platform UI is also running. So, so now we can essentially go back to this page and click on this uh, URL. So now you have your own uh, installer or your own self-hosted version of the UI uh, to log in. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, we get this password. So just use that, log in. You can do remember me, that's it. So now uh, if you, Uh, visit the console. Yeah, so, uh, you know, as you can see, this has the uh, TLS secured with the certificate from uh, Let's Encrypt. Uh, and then now from here, you can essentially uh, connect your cluster. So you can do import cluster and uh, follow the steps here. Uh, if you need further help, just let us know. Uh, we'll be happy to help you. And for the other uh, UI, uh, for the QDB UI and for the Grafana UI, those are already uh, made part of this. So today, uh, right now, you don't have a cluster. So once you import a cluster, this will show up and you will be able to provision those databases uh, through those UI. Okay, so that's a kind of a short and quick demo of how to use the self-hosted installer. If you have any questions, just let us know. Uh, and thank you. Bye.